ready to proceed with the next step, which is to wire in the ESCs and decide how they are going to be placed. The ESCs that I have here are the Hobbywing Platinum Pro 30 amp Opto ESCs. I have already removed this little center plate because it just got in the way of working with these wires. As I was doing that, I realized I have a problem. These mounting standoffs for the whole rail system, which needs to go in like that. Now these hold on to it on this side, one side, you've got black ones which are going to go on the other side. There's one for that side, there's one for that side. You have these little rubbers that go in there and these are going to push through there. Now, the problem I discovered is that <laughs> um, these aren't mounted yet. And my screw driver doesn't fit through that hole in from the other side so that I can screw it in. So, we've got two choices here. What I'm going to do, which is, I'm going to go for option two, but let me show you what option one would be. <laughs> option one would be to remove this entire plate, top plate. And it means removing those screws again and all of these other screws and redoing the entire thing. For me, that's just way too much work and I have opted to enlarge those holes right it seems it, it fits through some of the holes but not all of them so yeah they're almost to, to the size that I need them anyway I'm gonna drill them a little larger so that I can just get my screwdriver through and I will be able to screw this on from the other side so yes I'm gonna quickly do that and then we'll be back and I'll show you how I'm gonna do the ESC mountings I have uh, Enlarge these little holes from 3 millimeter to 3.6 millimeters. So the screwdriver, the hex screwdriver now fits through there quite easily. And I'm going to now mount these um, the rail holders or rail seats. Okay, now before I mount these, I'm actually going to insert these rubbers because uh, I think it might be a little difficult to put uh, to mount the rubbers later. Now let's squeeze these in before we actually mount them because I think once you have these mounted this may become a fairly difficult task. And there we go. So we've got those four ready. And I'm going to grab my first screw. Okay, these screws are tiny and uh, to get them in there, my fingers are just too big. So uh, I'm going to be using some tweezers just to grip them on the side, just so I can drop, drop them into the hole. Push this from the top. There we go. And there you go. Now, that is, uh, as I say, my option two. Option one was to remove the entire top plate, which I really do not look forward to. That would be a serious job. So for those guys that ended up in the same situation, I really do apologize. Maybe I should go back to the previous videos and just make an annotation there somewhere. There we go. We now have uh, our rail seats mounted. Now, the other thing that is nice about having these there is that uh, it's also going to give me an indication of where I need to space some of these things. I'm not going to put through the rails now because the rails are then going to get in the way of me trying to complete this thing. In order for me to make sense of all these wires coming out here, it's, a, it's an absolute crow's nest down in India. I am going to take my ESCs and I'm going to wire them onto these bullet connectors for each arm. 
Now, at this stage, I'm not too concerned about uh, numbering them, etc. But what I am going to make sure I do is these ESCs have all been pre-wired and uh, the bullet connectors have all been connected, etc. And they followed the same method of red, blue, black. Red, blue, black. Same order in each. So I'm going to follow that methodology. And I am going to put my red onto the red. And I'm going to use blue for yellow. And then black onto black. Now, this is going to mean that all the motors are going to spin in the same direction. But the advantage of that is that once I figure out in which direction it has chosen, which is normally clockwise, but not necessarily, then the opposing motors or the motors that I want to sp have spin anti-clockwise, you just switch the, the, the black and the red, and it will then change uh, spin direction. But uh, we'll get there when we get there. And for now, just to get all these wires a little more sorted, I'm just going to plug them all in like that. We now have all of our ESCs plugged in and it gives us a bit more of a clearer view of where the cables are and where they need to go. So the next step is going to be to try and figure out where we are going to hide these little ESCs and uh, yeah I'll show you how I mount those as soon as I figure that out. What I've done is I've double stacked these inside and on top of each other with the cables going on the one side and I've used the cable tie there are oh, holes there already in the frame and I cable tied them through there and they're pretty sturdy they hold on there and I seriously doubt they're going to go anywhere and the cables come out quite neatly and I'm happy with that and just for those who want to see how I did this I'm actually going to do one now and for the rest of you who think you can figure that out by yourself you can just skip ahead in this part of the video right now so this was a little tricky I didn't want these the, the, the this side feels like it's uh, the heat sink I didn't want these on top of each other so the one with a um, heat sink on this side and the other one I placed on top of it like that um, no, let me just those are actually the capacitors and uh, yes you can actually squeeze these together they do bend a little bit right so we want them pretty much something like that and to get them in there I chose to put the wires on that side and I'm putting this side motor f uh, in first twist it around a little bit and you don't have to yank through those cables all of them because we're going to be putting it something like that it's, it's a bit of a puzzle it's a puzzle game there we go that one is going in right and it's almost on top of each other bring it forward a little bit and there we go just put that in a little more just so there's a bit of stress relief okay now we've got the two on top of each other the heat sinks facing away from each other it's <laughs> It's, it's such a little bit of a heat sink, it actually dissipates through the heat shrink that is around it, if it is a heat, uh, heat sink. Okay, now, put this cable tie through here, through this hole, let me just show you on the camera here. Go through that hole and it's going to come up through that hole. I'm not going to put it through the other side of the frame because I want to put, have it pulled down on the ESCs the ESCs are what I want to keep in place and again it is fairly tricky because <coughs> space is a little tight you can actually place this one down flat that's what I did now I've got a second cable tie which I'm going to feed through there if you've got long cable ties by all means use them but uh, I don't so I'm using two put that one there slip it over that one's head Right now 
to make sure that I'm actually have it pulled fairly taut. I'm going to use my long nose plier. Just going to line these a little more so that they look good. Um, I like the job to look neat. So that's just me. If you don't mind it being a little un untidy, it's all up to you. Right. This one I'm really happy with. I'm just going to pull it towards slightly more. There we go. Doesn't need to be that tight. I'm going to use my long nose plier. Snip that one off. It's just going to get in there. Now that is fairly tight. It's not going to go anywhere. And uh, I'm happy with that for now. Later, when I'm pretty much done with everything, I'll re cable tie more and uh, just get the cables held down neatly but for now i'm happy with that what i have decided to do is mount the final esc for this arm onto that side i'm now going to take the esc from this one and mount it onto this side but just to show you how nice and neat that looks the cables are coming out on this side and they will go in there and we can clean that up i've put a cable tie on the tip here and I've put a cable tie underneath here. There's enough clearance for this arm still to uh, move. And yeah, there, there, there's actually a hole right next to there through which that cable tie comes. It'll be this hole on this side. And that stops it from moving at all. And I did actually confirm that the arm can freely still open and close so yes and for those interested in how i did it i'm actually going to mount this esc on this side i show you the whole process for those not interested in doing this watching this you can just skip forward onto this part of the video right now what i did first is just to try and sort these cables a little bit so they would look a little neater when you do the final tie down okay let's, actually, let's put it this way around so we can see on that camera as well now we've got that little hole on the uh, arm on this side and yes that's about what i want now i'm just going to use a cable tie pull a cable tie up and just to make my life a little easier, I'm first going to put through the cable tie and then up through the hole. Okay. All right. It's up through the hole. Push it through. Start tightening. Right. Once you have it, have it gripped a little bit, so I've put it through that hole there. And now I can start pulling. Now with your cable tie already gripped on that side, you guys, if you work with a lot of cable ties, you'll understand what I mean with the grip points. And uh, now I can pull down without forcing too much pressure onto that. That's already pretty good. And I am happy with that. Let's twist it against it. Right, and that's be going to be approximately where I want it. That's good. Very much aligned with that one on that side and to me it's all about something that's neatly done is uh it's good it, it, it's pleasing to the eye one and two you can always see what is going on where if, if something comes loose you can see it's 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 come loose now there's another little hole right there and i'm going to try and get these cables all together through that flat you don't have to tighten them all the way down it's basically just to keep the wires together and uh, just to keep things neat all right there we go it holds it i'm happy with that clip that off the cable tie and there we go so even as is right now we can already see it's cleaner it's uh, we can see what's going on it's not 
in such a crazy crow's nest, everything there makes sense. And because we have wired it up the way we did, we d made sure that this one is on top and it's on the left, this one's on the right, the same with that one, it's that side and that side. It, it just makes sense to me anyway. Um, guys, and uh, that is that. If you have any questions, please leave them down in the comments. If you have any comments, leave comments. Like the video if you like it. And uh, yeah, subscribe if you want to subscribe. Because in the next video, I'm going to show you how I do the soldering and mounting of the power distribution board.